first test we're going to describe is the ANSI ESD STM 7.1, which is the test for the resistive properties of the flooring system. Um, the test procedure actually has two different procedures in it. One is for qualification, which is typically done in a lab in the controlled conditions. The other is for product acceptance, which is done in the field when the product's been installed, to accept the product after it's been installed. Um, so there are procedures for both, and we'll describe them all. The first thing to note is you want to use an ESD resistance meter. Now, there are other resistance meters in the market that are used for different purposes. Um, an ESD resistance meter works in a certain way. Um, the standard has the specifications for the type of meter you should use, but just be certain you're using an ESD resistance meter. Um, they come with these five pound probes, which gives you a good contact with the surface of what you're testing, um, and, they, and they give you the results you need. So the first part of the test, as I said, we'll, we'll talk about the qualification testing, which again is typically done in a lab in controlled humidity conditions, um, again both 12% and 50%. And within that test there are two, two things that we test. We test resistance to ground and resistance across the surface. Um, with resistance to ground, one lead is attached to a grounding point on the flooring system sample, and the other is attached to one of the probes. And you're, so you're essentially testing the resistance from the probe through the material to the grounding point. And again, in the lab, controlled conditions. Um, before you do the test, you want to clean the probe with the alcohol. I've already done that. Um, we just use these simple alcohol wipes. So I've got the first point set up uh, within this test. So we're testing one lead to ground, and we test six points on the flooring sample. The sample is supposed to be at least two feet by one feet. This sample is a little bit bigger than that. Um, and then the standard test method has this pattern where you're supposed to test. So it has six spots that you test. And I'll just run through them really quickly. So we have it on the first spot, which is basically the lower left-hand corner. Um, I test the resistance, and I can see that I'm getting under 10 to the fifth ohms. Um, these meters work. Uh, they, have, they either apply 10 volts or 100 volts. Some meters automatically switch, some you have to change, some you can set. Um, the way the standard test method works is you, you take a re uh, reading at using um, 10 volts, and if the reading is above 10 to the 6th ohms, then you switch to 100 volts. Um, and there's a reason for that in terms of accuracy and reliability of the reading. Um, so in this net meter, I currently have it set at 10 volts. Um, this does have a setting where it will automatically switch, but since the first result was under 10 to the 6th, uh, it didn't switch. Um, so that was the first point. The second point is kind of in the middle towards the left, and we would test that again under 10, well under 10 to the 6th. The third point is kind of uh, towards the center of the top. Again, we're getting a similar result. The fourth point is kind of in the middle on the right. And the, the, the uh, locations are detailed in the standard. There's a little map that tells you how to do this. The fifth point is kind of the bottom right. Now in this case it went just above 10 to the 6, so I'm going to switch this to the auto sensing. And you can see now that I'm testing at 100 volts, it dropped down. I'm going to switch it back. And then the last point is kind of in the middle of lower. And again, we're under 10 to the 6th. So those are the six points. Now in, the, in this resistance to ground, we do all that again, except we move the grounding point kind of to the other side. And then we'll do those same six spots. One, two, three, four, five. Six. We we'll record all that. So that's resistance to ground. The other half of qualification testing is done uh, surface to surface or point to point. And in this case, we're going to use two probes, and we're going to test across the surface of the tile. And it's the layout's pretty similar. We're going to take one probe and kind of keep it stationary, like we did with the grounding point, and you set it kind of near where the grounding point was, top left. And then you'll take your other probe and you'll go through the same six spots. So you start with the bottom left, 
and now we're getting above 10 to the 6. Well, switch it over, and you can see when I've switched it, it drops down under 10 to the 6. Um, second point is, uh, again, in the middle, on the left. Oh. So that's now measuring at 10 volts, so at 110 to the 6th. The third point, again up in the middle, over, so I'll switch it, and you can see it dropped down. I did this on purpose, by the way. Um, <clears throat> and then we would do 4, 5, and 6. And like with the resistance to ground, we're going to then move this probe to the other side, and we're going to do the same 6 spots. Uh, four, five, and six. So it's, it's a little tedious, but you get a lot of information. It gives you kind of a map of that sample. Again, this is, qualification is done in laboratory conditions, um, both low and moderate humidity. Uh, and that's, that's the qualification testing. Accepting testing <clears throat> is done after you've installed it, so we'll show that next.